The world's slowly opening back up, which means we wanted to know what it would be like to be stuck in an airport. Okay, fine, we saw Terminal starring Tom Hanks and immediately thought, hey, there's something for the info lab rat to do. Day one. I live in an airport now. This is my life. Well, at least for the next five days. So I was hesitant about this challenge because I thought there'd be no way I could successfully evade being spotted given how few people are flying nowadays. In the US, airport traffic dropped from as much as 2.5 million people a day to just under 100,000 when the pandemic first hit. But turns out that with people getting vaccinated, the world's slowly opening up again, so airport traffic is once more up, but not that much as I quickly found out. To tell the truth, LAX, one of the busiest airports in the world, still feels empty. Me and the girlfriend have been through here frequently flying out to vacation or to see family or for work, so we're used to pressing throngs of crowds everywhere you go. However, when I got past security into the terminal area, the place was shockingly empty. I mean, there was still a lot of people here, but maybe half as usual. By the way, Infographics had to pony up for a plane ticket to get me past security, and the show's lawyers apparently confirmed that even if I got caught, I wouldn't face any real trouble. Of course, I'm pretty sure that the show's lawyers are actually just some Google searching of can I get in trouble for staying at an airport? But you know what? There's a prize at stake and me wants it bad. The show has given me a challenge, a challenge in a challenge if you will, to get into one of the elite VIP lounges. And if I can manage that feat, then they'll pay for a trip for me and the girlfriend anywhere I want. Well, anywhere in the continental US, anyway. I'm pretty sick of coronavirus lockdown, so I want that trip. So how does one sneak into a VIP lounge? Well, you don't. There's always staff at the entrance, which usually has to electronically unlock the door for you to enter after they verify your credentials, because you wouldn't want any dumb normals to ruin your VIP fun time after all. Going through a service area would be an option, except the US government is pretty frowny face on the whole sneaking into non-public areas inside airports ever since certain events in the early 2000s. I don't feel like going to federal prison, so no thanks. Instead of sneaking in, I'm just going to walk in. And what's more, I'll be allowed inside. Let me explain. My goal is to simply follow someone who is already going to the VIP lounge and on the way try and get some personal deets from them. Then later I'll pose as their assistant and say that they forgot something inside. And won't you please just let me take a quick look around? How in the world am I going to do that? I got a plan. But it's going to take a while to pull off. Stay tuned kiddos because today Infographics Show is going to teach you how to pull off a con. Anyway, there's not much to report about my first day at the airport except that it's really boring. I brought my laptop and a tablet like any good traveler, and there's plenty of tables with plugs for your electronics, so I mostly just minded my own business and watched movies. I even did some research on local conditions in Oregon for our Bigfoot trip later this month in May. That's right, if you missed the announcement, my next challenge is to hunt for Bigfoot in a hotspot area, and I'll actually be filming it, so you get to see real footage. You can expect that episode probably in mid to late July. Now my biggest concern is getting spotted too many times by the staff, so the key is to remain mobile throughout the week. Luckily LAX is huge, so changing terminals is not a problem. Just hop on a tram and boom, you're a new you in a new place. I have to remain mobile, but living in the airport is probably going to be cake. Day 2 Last night I slept stretched out on several seats in one of the near empty terminals. Not super comfortable, but honestly I've slept worse places and many of those places were thanks to the show. In order to not draw attention, I found a gate that had a few other people, then just settled down like I was another passenger whose flight got delayed. First things first, I went to the bathroom to change my clothes and give myself a quick baby wipe shower in one of the stalls. I think there's actually real showers in LAX somewhere. I'll have to check it out later when I start to get too grimy for baby wipes. Next, I hopped to Cinnabon for a very unhealthy breakfast. And let me tell you, fresh cinnamon rolls are pretty much the most delicious thing on the planet. But I couldn't linger. Flights were already starting to come in and I had a job to do. I moved to terminals for flights coming in from smaller cities in the West and Midwest, which took some research to find all the large enough cities that some big shot VIP might be living in, but that didn't have international airports or flights directly to major Asian cities. LAX is a popular hub for people traveling to Asia from anywhere west of Texas, so there are several options. Luckily, flights were already coming in by 9.30 in the morning. First class leaves the plane first, because they're better than the rest of those peasants crammed into the potato storage or wherever the normies fly. So I had to be very punctual at my selected gates, and then wait for someone who looked like they might be elite VIP club material, and then basically just get lucky as hell as that person was A actually having a layover and B going to use the lounge. There were several prospects, and I followed them around, but most went straight to other gates. One guy actually went to a VIP lounge and checked in, but that was no good for me. 
See, the other thing I needed was for my mark to take the time to stop somewhere and buy something so I could have time to scope out some of their personal details. Honestly, these are all just basic recon skills Uncle Sam already taught me, just applied in a way that Uncle Sam would probably really frown upon. Like any good recon op, the key is patience, and today just wasn't my day. That's okay, I had three more. For bedtime, I hit up a different terminal than last night's and once more pretended to be a stranded traveler. I suppose if I was sleeping in a gate all alone, I might draw attention, but being smart about it and sticking to those gates where other sleepers were let me blend in. I thought I'd be really bored with not much to do at the airport, but the challenge of scamming my way into a VIP lounge honestly ate up most of my day as I followed random people around. Day 3 LAX is pretty massive and has dozens of restaurants and food vendors. That's pretty good because I can hit up new places every breakfast, lunch, and dinner. What's not good is how insanely expensive oh. airport food is. But hey, Infographics is picking up the tab and let me tell you, they're not going to be happy when they see my expense report. Alright, once more I was on the prowl for my mark bright and early after a quick change of clothes and a baby wipe shower. Turns out LAX has no showers for the public, so that's a bummer. But hey, I spent months at a time taking baby wipe showers, so a week isn't going to kill me. Along with my personal items and clothes, I brought a few extra accessories like a bandana my dog usually wears, a big scarf the girlfriend doesn't know I stole for the week, and a few other random bits like that. If you saw my challenge of staying 24 hours in a grocery store, then you know that the key to staying unnoticed is to frequently make changes to your appearance. That's something other YouTube challenge experts won't tell you, by the way. They'll just hide in a dumb toilet paper fort or something and pretend it was hard to do. Here we teach you how to remain unnoticed and how to con your way into a VIP lounge. So anyway, I used the bandana and scarf and a few other items to frequently change the appearance of my backpack, the one item that I couldn't really change. I could wear a hat and change my shirt and pants to disguise myself and keep people from recognizing me, but my backpack, even though I chose a very plain black color, could eventually start to look familiar to people. But by tying a bandana to it or doing something to alter its appearance, I break the pattern. This would be a big help in stalking my prey, because I don't want to freak someone out by following them across various trams and terminals. Sadly, today was unsuccessful. Nobody I chose to follow even went to the VIP lounge. They were all duds. Another day down the tubes. Day 4. Today was the day. Honestly, I'm glad Infographics bet me that I wouldn't be able to get into one of the VIP lounges because without this added challenge, living in an airport is mind-blowingly boring. The hardest part is just staying mobile so people don't recognize you, but honestly, it's not hard. Maybe if I were to spend a whole month here, it would be challenging. But with plenty of bathrooms, electric outlets, comfortable chairs, and restaurants galore, there's really no difficulty in living out of an airport, unless you like privacy. However, gaining access to a VIP lounge gave me something to focus on, and today I was successful. It happened around 2 p.m. Another regional flight came in and bam, there he was. Tall white guy, dressed business casual, but with very expensive shoes and a very expensive watch. That was the giveaway for me, so I followed him. I just needed him to actually be traveling past Los Angeles and to have a layover long enough to want to hit up a private lounge. Total crapshoot, I know, but by this time I'd easily followed a hundred prospective individuals. I'm not kidding when I say it's literally the only thing I've done for most of the last 72 hours. My mark immediately headed for the terminal with many of the day's Asian destinations, which tipped me off that this one was definitely worth following. I'd already taken a photo of departures for reference, so I knew that there was a flight boarding within the next 10 minutes, and the next flight wouldn't be for another few hours. Hours. The guy wasn't in a rush, so he wasn't going to be on the flight leaving soon. My hopes rose. But I needed him to not just be on a long delay, I also needed him to actually stop somewhere and give me time to snoop on his private details. We got off the tram and he calmly walked toward the rear of the terminal, which I had already scoped out and I knew was the location of at least one VIP travelers club. I was getting pretty excited about this point, and really, really needed him to stop somewhere first. If he went straight to the club, I don't think I could pull off my plan the way I hoped to. Lucky for me, Mr. VIP was in the mood for, wouldn't you know it, Cinnabon. Man, is Cinnabon not literally the best? Yes, the answer is yes. So I quickly pulled a hat out of my bag, put it on, dropping it low over my face. With my face mask, it made it really difficult to identify me, and I found myself grateful <laughs> for mask restrictions for the first time in a year. The next part of my plan was the riskiest, and though I'd been trained to get close to individuals and glean personal details without arousing suspicion, it had been a long time since I'd actually done it. Now, social distancing really ramped up the challenge level here because I needed to get physically close. Luckily, I had a plan. While Mr. VIP was in line, I quickly went across the way from the Cinnabon to a fast food place and snatched a packet of ketchup. 
and then I made my way back. I moved to the counter, an appropriate six feet away from where orders were being taken, and then pretended to be talking on the phone. For all intents and purposes, for mm. customers I was someone possibly waiting for a difficult order while I chatted on the phone, and to the staff I was just someone coming in close to look at the menu while chatting away. In my pocket though, I ripped the corner of the ketchup packet slightly and then palmed it. With one person left before Mr. VIP placed his order, I pretended to tie my shoe while still chatting on the phone and used the opportunity to place the open ketchup packet on the floor next to me, squeezing it slightly so a little bit of ketchup squirted out. Then I waited for Mr. VIP to place his order. Timing would be crucial. Mr. VIP placed his order and then moved to pay. He reached into his pocket and pulled out his wallet, then flipped it open. That's when I made my move. I kicked the ketchup packet over right next to his feet and swiftly moved in, grabbing him by the same arm that he was holding his open wallet with. In my hand that I grabbed him with was my phone, only upside down and facing down his arm toward his wallet. I hurriedly cautioned him that he was about to step on a ketchup packet and moved him slightly away, then joked that his shoes looked really expensive and we both looked down at the open package that I had just kicked to his feet. He was shocked at first, but then we both laughed, as I apologized for scaring him. I just wanted to avoid him ruining a great looking pair of shoes. He thanked me and then went back to paying as I departed, him having absolutely no idea that I had just taken a photo of his open wallet. By zooming in, I was easily able to clearly see all the details of his driver's license, which like most people he kept in a clear sleeve inside his wallet. Yep, really is that easy. Spy or a con job movie makes things look really difficult, but I promise you it isn't. It just takes some nerve and a bit of cleverness. For my next phase of the plan, I rushed to a nearby bathroom and hurriedly changed out of my jeans and t-shirt into a pair of nice brown slacks and a casual but still nice top that I had bought specifically for this. I also rushed to throw on a pair of brown leather shoes that I bought specifically for this. I had to look the part for the next part of the con. What came next would rely on a little bit of luck. I came back out of the bathroom and luckily Cinnabon was busy so Mr. VIP must have only recently gotten his order because he was already on the move. I followed him at a healthy distance and sure enough, he went straight to the VIP lounge. Now, I'm not allowed to actually say which VIP lounge this was because Infographics really doesn't want to get into trouble with LAX, so I watched him begin the check-in process, then I made my move. I removed my mask because now I was pretending to be too important for things like public health guidelines, but also because I really needed the staff at the check-in counter to recognize my face. Then I rushed to the counter and straight up to Mr. VIP, and as I got there I said something like, Mr. So-and-so, Mr. So-and-so, I got the, oh I'm sorry, let me get this call, Mr. So-and-so. Then I hurried off, pretending to receive a call. All I needed from Mr. VIP was to not make a comment to the staff like, who is that weirdo, mm -hmm. or anything like that. It was okay if he looked bewildered or confused because to the staff I looked like a well-dressed personal assistant who maybe wasn't too good at his job and maybe a little bit rude. His bewilderment could simply be him wondering why he puts up with me. Also, airport staff don't get paid nearly enough to care that mm -hmm. much about the details, to be honest. And that, boys and girls, is the key to a good con job. Never underestimate how little underpaid employees care. Mr. VIP went to his lounge and I hurried off to be lost in the crowd, then returned and snuck to the front area of a nearby gate where I could watch the VIP lounge from afar but not be spotted by the staff. Once more, it was a waiting game. It took almost three hours but finally Mr. VIP exited the lounge and headed off to his gate. I watched him go until I was satisfied he wasn't coming back. Then waited another 15 minutes. I slapped my cheeks a little bit to redden them and disheveled my hair a bit to make it look like I'd been running, and then jogged over to the VIP desk. Before the lady at the check-in desk could say anything, I broke into a rush speech. Mr. So-and-so, I used both first and last names, was just here and he left his phone in his, I mean, our flight to Shanghai is leaving in like five minutes. I made sure to mention both his first and last names to cement the fact in this lady's mind that I really knew who this guy was. And since she'd just seen me a few hours earlier using his name in full before, it just helped sell the con. She offered to go inside and have a quick look, but I became slightly hysterical and begged her to just let me rush in. I know what it looks like and I'll be in and out. If Mr. So-and-so missed his flight or lost his phone full of very important contacts, I'd probably lose my job. And bam, the lady nodded and hit the electronic mm -hmm. lock, letting me inside. Now I really wanted to show you guys yeah. the picture I snapped and sent to our yeah. head producer to prove my oh, feat, yeah. but that's just not going to happen. First, I had a very stern talking to about potential identity theft in the commission of what may or may not have been a crime after this challenge was over. Second, the last thing the show wants is for anybody at the airport to see the photo and have proof that someone on staff at the show may or may not have committed a teensy weensy amount of fraud against them. Airport people are really touchy about you flouting their security rules. So that was it. Challenge completed, and despite some back and forth about the morality of how it was completed, I won that free trip fair and square. Okay, semi-fair. How was day 5? 
Honestly, without the challenge of committing a minor felony on airport grounds, it was pretty boring. If the entire challenge had been just sit there, I definitely could see how it might have been stressful. Lucky for me, though, I got to spend my last day on my laptop planning out a trip for me and the girlfriend to go visit her grandmother. Her grandmother hasn't gotten any visitors since COVID because she was especially vulnerable. But now that we're all vaccinated, she can finally see people again. I would have loved to take a trip somewhere nice and have a small vacation, but I'd rather do something that'll make the girlfriend and her family happy. Now, go check out 24 Hours in a Grocery Store to learn how to commit more crimes, or check out this other video instead.